important as this one and uh, 50 employees at that particular time is brought up to 50,000 employees and uh, it has been the cognizant was put on the world map uh, and similarly I'm sure child trust you with this uh, guidance and with this involvement and I'm sure every function doesn't go but she has kept this hospital in her mind all the time she's part of the CTMR of board <coughs> She is, as you all know, chief scientist of the World Health Organization. And she's traveling in India for a brief while. And we are extremely happy to have her with us today to inaugurate the Medical Research Foundation Laboratory, which she just visited a few minutes back, and to share his thoughts, her thoughts and views with some of us here. We had a brief interaction with her. A few of the, uh, the doctors and surgeons from this hospital part participated in that. A special mention to Dr. Balaji who is here, who has come here on this special occasion. We did share with Soumya some of the uh, challenges that we have in the city, some of the accomplishments that our medical doctors and surgeons have accomplished in this hospital and the way forward. It was a very nice and interesting interaction. I will share some of those with you. We did share how far this the culture of focus on outcomes, the culture of learning constantly because of which we have one of the best academic programs in this hospital and many of the uh, the doctors who complete their DNB choose to stay here in this hospital and work and those who leave after the program have accomplished great many things outside of this hospital in the various the medical fraternity that they are engaged in. So it's a, it's a great place and it's a great honor for me to be present on this occasion of this inauguration to welcome all of you. I hope you have an enjoyable interaction with Dr. Soumya Swaminathan and the rest of the delegates who are here. Thank you very much. This booklet is uh, mainly with the, the Department of Pediatrics and Infectious Diseases and uh, Dr. Sulochana from Microbiology, Chandra Kumar from Neonatology, Dhanalakshmi from PACU, Vanati from Neonatology, Pinky from Pediatrics, Sanjay Teshpande, Silky Agarwal and Lakshmi Raj of Pediatrics. afternoon. Uh, all my old friends and colleagues, so many familiar faces in the room. Mr. Lakshmi Narayana, Chairman of the Board, I think uh, you have done a wonderful job. I think uh, the Board of Trustees over the last five years, remarkable uh, changes in this hospital, much needed. Really remembering uh, Dr. MSR today and telling them how in 91, if things had been different, maybe we, I would have also joined this hospital. But then everything could have been different after that. So, whatever... Uh, happened is, is okay. Mr. Chandra Mohan, thank you very much for making the arrangements and we should also thank Mr. Pindu for your uh, investments into this very important uh, research laboratory. So it's uh, good to be back here after maybe, I don't know how long it's been, maybe a couple of years, but uh, I left Chennai about two years, uh, no, 2016 I moved to Delhi, so it's been more than that. Um, so it's it's nice to see the the dream of the founder of this uh, this hospital. I'm sure Dr. Matangi would give you a lot of satisfaction to see the hospital as it is now, really providing excellent, high quality clinical care. You can see the crowds uh, outside attest to the fact that uh, the doctors and services here are so much in demand. Uh, we have increase the number of uh, seats for DNB and uh, be able to provide very high quality education and I understand this is one of the top selection, top choices for DNB candidates in pediatrics and pediatric surgery. The, the research which has always been an element of, uh, in fact I used to be on the ethics committee as well and we used to look at research proposals and uh, in the interaction that we had a little bit before with the faculty I was just remarking that 
the research uh, projects here have continued and uh, in fact are getting uh, more in number and very good projects from ICMR funded, not only the industry funded, but also funding coming in, multicentric surveillance studies and really contributing to the, the knowledge on disease burden. Uh, and now with the research laboratory being able to do molecular diagnostics, we'll be able to collect much more data on, on infectious diseases. So far, the focus has been you know, quite a lot on infectious diseases. And is it time to start thinking about other things? So if we really need to think about what next can Child Trust really do, having really proved itself as a center of excellence for pediatric care. One is research, start making a name in, in research. And that can only be done if uh, more people get involved. Uh, I find that Dr. Balasubramaniam has been uh, really holding the flag high uh, on, on research. And then others have uh, also joined in. Uh, but I think the philosophy of this place was always about service. And so it is not very difficult to really see how one can because research is all about collecting good data. And I was asking Ms. Lakshmi Naranan just now whether you have the uh, fully electronic patient records now, the health information system. So once you have that, then it becomes much easier to do analysis and look at larger data sets. I was very impressed with what the Tamil Nadu government has been able to put in place in terms of health information systems. I had uh, gone to see for myself how they have developed their platforms. And uh, they've taken a very visionary approach. It's not just the patients who are coming to the hospital that they are uh, recording, but they have decided to take a population-based approach. And this is exactly what the WHO has been talking about, universal health coverage. How do you know it's universal unless you know the denominator? Uh, if 100 patients, the same 100 people may be coming to the hospital. Each one may come 10 times, but that doesn't mean that you're covering the population. So they have now mapped the population to each health center using the PDS database and other databases they have. So they would be able to actually see for every health center, if it's a population of 5,000 or 10,000, how many people are actually using the health services and for what reasons. That is actually the, the, the basis for delivering primary health care because I think what is going to happen is without focus on primary health care, without focus on prevention and disease promotion, we will be overwhelmed. Any number of hospitals we build will not be able to take care of the sick because we are not paying any attention to the risk factors and the determinants of disease. And um, for infectious diseases, of course, water, sanitation and immunization are really important uh, factors. Once your water sanitation improves, large number of diseases will, will be reduced, especially the waterborne diseases. And then immunization is already protecting our children against a large number of... We have to make sure that our immunization rates remain high. But one of them was the inclusion of gaming disorder as, as a disorder, as a medical condition. And that was, of course, a very controversial one because industry was very much against that, <laughs> the gaming industry. But uh, psychiatrists from all around the world actually sat together to make those uh, classifications. So it is clear that there's, and I know that many hospitals are now setting up clinics, digital de-addiction clinics. We used to have alcohol de-addiction clinics. Now we have the digital de-addiction clinics, particularly for teenagers and youngsters, because whole life is actually getting transformed. So these are the challenges of modern the world. So we also need to adapt ourselves and look into the future to see what are the things that would be really and mental health amongst adolescents is a hugely neglected problem child abuse in our country is a hugely neglected problem these are areas where i think this hospital can can show leadership um, you know like dr matangi did in those days on burns treatment for children sort of really and chennai used to be the hub and continues to be the hub of medical science from where the innovations used to come. Indian childhood cirrhosis was described by Dr. Bal Gopal Raju in, in a children's hospital. So many things came out of Chennai. All our textbooks were full of descriptions from doctors in Chennai. So I think what are the next boundaries that we need to look at? It's, it's around mental health, around uh, 
growing up into a holistic human being, not just physically, but also cognitively, mentally, and and socially complete uh, human being. So, paying attention to those other elements of childhood, and I think WHO is also very very keen that those elements are looked at. So, for for universal health coverage, I think uh, the other important elements are apart from diagnosis and treatment to provide palliation and rehabilitation services is also very important and for that we need a good system where the assistive devices whether it's hearing aids or, or spectacles or other kinds of devices and today you have a lot of uh, uh, innovation in this in this field medical devices and assistive devices which are uh, which are much more user friendly and which allow the person to do a lot of uh, things I've, I've been just looking at some companies who are using virtual reality uh, they are using artificial intelligence to create uh, you know rehabilitation resources so I think a rehabilitation center for for children who have uh, chronic disabilities physical and intellectual would also be a good uh, one where you can do a lot of innovations and, and basically give these children a better quality of, of life so I, I wish um, this hospital all the very best. I think uh, you've made a lot of progress and uh, should continue to, to do that, uh, both in, uh, as I said, clinical care, but also in um, education, um, in research, and uh, really make a mark, you know, in the field of pediatric. There are not very many pediatric hospitals in our country which focus just on children and in the subspecialities. So, huge opportunities here to really share your learnings with the colleagues from around uh, India. So, I wish all the staff as well as the trustees and I thank you for giving me this, uh, this opportunity again to share an afternoon with all of you today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At the outset, I would like to uh, welcome all the dignitaries on the dais and uh, colleagues from the hospital CTMRF uh, guests and uh, well-wishers and members of the press. Uh, the Childress Medical Research Foundation is an autonomous body pursuing, among uh, others, landmark research in the area of pediatrics, pediatric surgery and other allied specialities. CTMRF is one of the few uh, research foundations which is recognized by the scientific and industrial organizations, Government of India. A research laboratory as part of the Childress Medical Research Foundation has been a long cherished dream and uh, we had put together a proposal and submitted to the Board of Trustees uh, in 2017 and this was approved formally by the Board of Trustees in the month of August 2017. And uh, we went around looking for uh, funds to realize this uh, dream, this project and uh, we are grateful to the Cholamandalam group for having made a generous donation of a crore of rupees which uh, helped us realize this dream. This uh, research facility is housed in the basement of the main hospital building and uh, the entire uh, project was on a lump sum turnkey basis executed by Siemens Healthcare. So work for this laboratory started in June of 2018 and completed by December of 2018 and this laboratory has been built to national and international standards. The laboratory was assessed for all its functional parameters and became fully functional during the month of January 2019. And this laboratory is probably the first of its kind in our country, which is a laboratory research laboratory housed in a multi-speciality pediatric setup, a not-for-profit setup, and uh, <clears throat> uh, hopefully will be generating a lot of uh, research and diagnostic uh, work output in the years to come. The laboratory has a fully automated uh, Siemens Versa and KPCR system supported by a host of ancillary equipment and uh, this will be used to provide pediatric focused research, diagnostics, teaching and training. Deliverables will include successful initiation of research and diagnostic uh, programs in a phased manner, research training programs uh, which uh, will result in data which will be presented in conferences resulting in high impact publications in both national and international journals and hopefully the establishment of a PhD program down the line. So this uh, laboratory has now been uh, 
made fully functional and we initiated two studies as on date. Uh, one is uh, looking at the respiratory infections in children with cancer, which is funded by HDFC AMC again through their uh, CSR program. And uh, the second study is looking at uh, the profile of dengue infections in children, which is a project which is funded through CTMR of intramural sources. As we uh, inaugurate the laboratory formally today by our Honorable Chief Guest, uh, Dr. Samya Swaminathan, and uh, in the presence of uh, uh, Mr. Kundu from Cholamandalam, uh, who's uh, the, the, the group generosity has made this possible. We hope that this uh, laboratory will uh, be the first uh, phase in a series of steps which will strengthen uh, the research uh, output of this hospital. And uh, we are very thankful to Dr. Saumya for uh, suggesting areas where we could work down the line. As um, Ma'am was mentioning, non-communicable diseases are going to come up in a big way and we are uh, focusing on uh, cancers as of now and uh, we are also looking at a nutritional program, looking at the nutritional profile of uh, children and uh, obesity and related aspects would be interesting areas where we could uh, develop our research programs in the future. I would like to uh, thank the Board of Trustees of KKCTH, CTMRF, for, uh, CTMRF Chairman uh, Mr. Lakshmi Narayanan and uh, others for having supported our venture. Special note of thanks to CEO uh, Mr. Chandra Mohan and our Medical Director uh, Dr. Balasubramanian whose constant support has helped in the realization of this uh, laboratory. I would like to once again place on record thanks to uh, Chief Guest Dr. Samia for making time to come and inaugurate this laboratory and also to all the guests here who have uh, made time to be with us on this occasion. Thank you. Mostly it is customary that the person who contributes a lot gives the vote of thanks. I think I want to break the tradition. The person who has done the least for the whole thing is going to give the vote of thanks. That's me. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me thank uh, our friend, well wisher Saumya Samanathan, for taking time and uh, uh, coming to our hospital to inaugurate this. But the last time she came uh, was in the Chennai Pedicon, I think two years back, to give uh, an ovation. After that, this is the second pediatric event in which she is taking part. Thank you, Dr. Samya. And uh, most importantly, the, the friendly pieces of advice she gave uh, <coughs> makes me wonder whether I should lose my interest in infectious diseases and move over to life shelter. I know it's too late, but still still some years are left, okay? Right, so uh, she gave a very nice suggestion that child stress should start concentrating on lifestyle diseases. That's a very, very important advice. I'm sure, Dr. Samia, we assure you, we look into it very seriously. But after all, we have moved from telephones to satellite phones and mobile phones. We are moving away from infection to autoimmunity and psychological problems. But I still remember when I was a postgraduate in uh, ICH uh, in 1983, we used to see only diarrhea. Nowadays we don't see diarrhea, we see only constipation because of junk food. Those days we never used to see rheumatoid arthritis or SLE. I am seeing them in dozen now. And slowly pediatricians are going out of business because there is hardly any pneumonia, hardly any diarrhea, and enteric fear is going to go out unless uh, we pediatricians train ourselves well like adult physicians to treat lifestyle disorders, we will all go out of business. So let me tell the youngsters who are here, please move away from infection, concentrate on lifestyle disease. That's a very, very important piece of advice we, we heard from you. We'll certainly take it up from now onwards. Our uh, thanks are due to Professor V. Balaji, whom I would say he is our friend, philosopher and guide, a very humble person who is well known in, uh, uh, internationally. But when, I, when we called him, I was not sure whether he is in India at all. Surprisingly, he is there. He is going to Sri Lanka tomorrow. In spite of that, he has agreed. He has helped us in establishing quite a few research projects in our institution. He has always been a mentor for our infectious diseases department. Thank you, Professor Walaji, on a personal scale. Of course, our thanks go to the Murugappa group, led by Mr. M.M. Murugappan, the executive chairman, 
and Mr. Arun Alagappan, Executive Director. In fact, I still remember uh, uh, me going and meeting them along with our CEO. Within 48 hours, we were given a sanction of a donation of one crore. After going through the profile of the hospital and our requirements, they immediately sanctioned the donation, without which this would not have been possible. Of course, our thanks should be go to Mr. Ravindra Kumar Kundu, the president of the Cholamandalam Finance and Investment Company, for uh, finding time to be with us along with uh, your colleagues. Thank you very much, sir. Because uh, all these things do not happen unless we have uh, support, guidance, and blessings from the Board of Trustees, starting from our chairman, Mr. A.C. Muthia, Dr. A.C. Muthia, who unfortunately could not attend the function today. Then, of course, our uh, uh, chairman of the CTMRF and trustee, Mr. Lakshmi Narayanan, who has been following the whole program meticulously with the immediate replies to our emails and monitoring the whole thing and arranging the event. And uh, our senior trustee, Mr. Shankar, who unfortunately uh, could not make it, he sent his blessings over the phone for the function. It's a strange coincidence that we have on a day where we are talking about research, we have two eminent persons from the UK. They happen to be here uh, today and they gracefully agreed to attend the function. One is my own, our own friend, uh, Professor A.V. Ramanan, Dr. Ramanan, thank you very much. A pediatric rheumatologist, a very well-known figure as far as students are concerned. Uh, every time he comes to Chennai, he calls me and tells me I want to uh, spend at least... Thank you. I'm very happy to be here today at the Child's Trust Hospital and uh, Medical Research Foundation. I've uh, watched this hospital since its inception in 1991. And being a pediatrician, I've also been closely associated with uh, the doctors and uh, with the activities here. So today, I was here to inaugurate the research lab, which is the latest addition to the facilities in this uh, hospital. The Child Trust Hospital and Research Foundation is providing very good uh, clinical service to children in Chennai and the neighboring areas. In addition, they provide high quality education because it's one of the very well center which is much in demand for the DNB program in pediatrics and pediatric uh, specialties. Plus they've also always had a tradition of research, conducting ethical research to meet the needs of uh, the children. This uh, addition of the research laboratory and the advanced facilities for molecular diagnostics will allow them to go even further and be able to find start doing research in areas where previously the knowledge is not there. So in my discussions with the, the doctors and the staff here today, we were talking about uh, the shifting profile of the disease burden in uh, India and particularly in Tamil Nadu, where because of our success in the public health program and the immunization program, to some extent water and sanitation, we have and a focus on the maternal health and the institutional deliveries, we have been able to substantially reduce maternal and child mortality rates, under five mortality. But at the same time, as you reduce infectious disease burden, the burden of other diseases, what we call as non-communicable diseases, is increasing. Autoimmune diseases, diseases caused by environmental risk factors, genetic diseases because children are surviving, uh, mental health disorders, uh, new diseases like gaming disorder, addiction to, to digital tools, addiction to social media, addiction to video games. These are all emerging diseases and we have to look into the future to see what are going to be the needs five years from today and ten years from today needs for infectious disease care will hopefully come down even further, but there will be a growing number of children who have chronic disease, who have cancer, who have autoimmune disease and who have uh, need for rehabilitation services. Because as children survive, there will no doubt be more children surviving with disabilities.
congenital blindness, deafness, other kinds of physical and intellectual disabilities. And in order to attain a good quality of life, they are going to need a lot of uh, devices, assistive devices. They are going to need hearing aids, cataract surgery, spectacles, other kinds of uh, motor devices. So rehabilitation is going to be important. And this is what we mean by universal health coverage. And WHO dis defines universal health coverage. It's not only about diagnosis and treatment, but it's also about rehabilitation and palliation for chronic pain. And very importantly, it's also about disease prevention and health promotion. Most of us in the health field, especially doctors, we focus on a patient when they're ill. But why did they become ill? Could we have prevented it? What could be the factors which we need to take into account to, to reduce the sickness, reduce the ill health, increase the wellness? So universal health coverage is about keeping people healthy, which is what SDG 3 goal is. It is well-being and health, not the absence of disease. So I think in India also, our, right from 1947, after the 46, we had the board committee report with a focus on primary health care. The focus was always from the beginning on primary health care. I think we need to go back now to that concept. How do we provide good primary health care? Because any number of big hospitals we build will not be able to take care of the sick if we are not able to prevent and treat diseases in the early stages. For children also, we need to start thinking in this way. 